So hey everybody, how's it going? Um, hope your week's been going good. Hope your weekend was great. And today we're going to go over five ways, and I said five, that can help you to grow your channel. Now this week's tips uh, were taken from Promota and a couple other uh, places uh, around YouTube and uh, off of YouTube. So today we're going to kind of focus into um, using hashtags to kind of tie every all your accounts together i know some of you don't have any other accounts uh, some of you have instagram some of you may have um facebook um just different ones so we're gonna go through i'm gonna look at my notes here because i am bad about remembering everything so let's see i would uh, suggest using the app uh, Color Notes or Color Notepad I think is what it's called uh, you get that in your Google um, Play Store works really good for taking notes you can copy, you can paste um, you do all kinds of stuff with it so let's kind of start this little session here so when it comes to social media ha hashtags can be wi a widely powerful tool to get your content in front of more people Whenever a user decides to follow you, then they'll see in your bio or your recent post that you have a YouTube channel as well. Therefore, you should be using hashtags in a majority of your social media posts in order to grow your audience. However, the real trick is to use hashtags that are relevant to your post. So, in other words, if you have a variety channel um, always putting the hashtag bushcraft doesn't work. It's the reason why I don't use the hashtag, hashtag bushcraft on everything. Um, a lot of times on my Instagram, which is, you know, bushcraft Joe 2020, it's to do with whatever I'm doing that day. So if I put in hot air ballooning, yeah, you know, with the balloon fest here recently. So, you know, I'll hashtag it as Balloon Fest 2020. And then, you know, somewhere in my description box, I'll, if I remember, I will put hashtag, you know, Balloon Fest 2020 or 2021. Or uh, if I'm out on a bike, you know, Eco Trek, um, you know, with a hashtag there. Um, just kind of ways to have everybody draw things together to your channel. So use a hashtag analytics tool that you can find on Google if you search for it. And you'll be able to find the best hashtags for your Instagram post. Um, the reason why that matters is because a lot of times um, when I did the hot air ballooning. So I did ballooning and over a million posts, you know, a million, a million people had used that same hashtag. What's the likelihood of a million people taking a look at my post not likely um but when i put in balloon fest 2021 nobody had used that at that time so that was something new and that's drawn about 20 to, to 50. so that's kind of important to go with that way the most popular hashtags in your content uh niche aren't always the best hashtags to use, which we just covered, to promote your content. Especially on Instagram where those tags probably have thousands, if not billions of posts. So yours could easily get lost in the ocean. These tags are often very generalized as well, so they don't help you reach viewers who are interested in your specific niche. Now this can go out to the bushcraft community. So another way to explain that is, so instead of just using the hashtag bushcraft, if your niche is really, you know, using knife carving, um, you might want to use hashtags that it does with those carvings, like spoon carving with a knife, um, things like that. Bushcraft is a pretty broad term. It's broad like hot air ballooning. There are plenty of hashtags and lenses tools that you can use online that will help you determine the best hashtags for your profile. Another way to do this is that you could research 
uh, trending hashtags on TikTok. Um, so I know some of you use TikTok. I don't, personally, but, you know, you may. And that will also help you find what's going viral. So if you can find out what's going viral, and you find something that is going viral, not quite there, but, you know, you can watch it, um, the views are jumping up, millions of people are watching it. If you can get something, do a video based on that topic, your chances of success is pretty good, especially if you can catch it in the early stages as it's going viral. Uh, there's all kinds of trends that are being set that way on TikTok. Um, so if you can get in there, you can do it that way. Another one is um, create your own hashtag to start a conversation with your audience on Twitter. That's a good one too because um, a lot of people have Twitter. Um, again, I don't. Um, I got banned off that years ago. But um, a lot of people still use it. It's still relative. And um, you can do that to start up a conversation on bushcraft or solar or you know going someplace. Um, whatever your topic, topic that you want to put up there. So it says that Twitter is a perfect place to connect with your viewers on an individual level. You can easily respond to any tweets and your mentions and replies. So this works really good. Um, back in when I first started this channel, it was more of a uh, gun and prepper channel. That worked really well. Um, got a lot of views uh, from using Twitter and the hashtags. The only problem was was that um, Twitter turned out to be very anti-gun, um, anti-prepper. So um, I got deleted right off that, banned. So be careful when you use your hashtags. Uh, you go to different media accounts. Um, read the terms of services to find out exactly what it is that you can and can't post. Something else um, to know is that you shouldn't limit your engagement to just a few likes and replies here and there. You should use Twitter as a place to build a community through conversation and connection. Now this is where I actually fail here on YouTube. So I can get you guys to subscribe to me. I can get you guys to drop comments, um, drop likes, drop shares. Um, but I fail to start conversations with um, a lot of you, you know, and um, Sometimes I understand um, that it may be a mutual thing, you know, you may be just stopping by to try to catch catch up or or you, or you know doing what you need to do during now today So you may not have a time for a lengthy conversation um, And I understand that totally um, I do however um, will reply to every email um that's no problem at all. Um, I don't have um, Facebook Messenger anymore. So um, there'd be a couple people that I do want to reach out and talk to. Um, we'll swap out numbers. So uh, Mr. Sawyer there, that was aimed at specifically at you and John. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's limited to either of y'all either. So uh, anybody that wants to swap out, do phone calls, do emails, uh, my email is in the about section on my page. And uh, you guys are more than welcome to email. You can also find YouTube trends that you can also go on too. So every video trend has a few key creators associated with it. For example, it's hard to watch a slime video without thinking of Karina Garcia. It's about right. Even if those creators didn't come up with these trends themselves, they're certainly creating the most popular videos in their genre. So if you, if you wanted to do a slime video, you did it based on, on that trend, you know, you watch uh, enough videos to understand the content and what's going on with it, you could do your own version of it so you didn't have to actually copy hers. But you could do your own version and keep that trend going. 
So hop, you want to hop on the bandwagon early of that trend. Whenever you see a major creator like a video with the potential to start a new trend, make sure you're among the first to recreate his or her video. Don't hesitate to set up your own camera and emulate what another vlogger has done. Just be sure to give credit by telling your viewers where the video ideal came from. After Jenna Marbles tried following one of, the, her, one of his makeup tutorials, James Charles quickly responded by recreating one of hers. So they kind of went back and forth. And um, that's a great, great ideal. We, we do that with the Fatwood. So when we do the Fatwood Pride Age, you know, a lot of times that's a kind of a growing trend. And, um, you know, a lot of people tune in to watch these videos. Uh, some of you guys will get over, well over 150 views on, on that. So, um, that is awesome. Thank you guys are great, um, for the way you guys do that. Wherever you guys are, are sharing that, um, or how you get the, the view counts that high, let's start a trend doing this. So we share our ideals with each other. So I challenge Jack. Uh, Redneck Renegade, he's one. I'd like to hear what you do um, to get your, your content out there. Uh, give me five things, Jack, that you do. And then you got to challenge somebody for that tag for a video response so we can see what they do. We'll see who's paying attention to this video. Make your videos longer than 10 minutes. Both the YouTube ranking algorithm and the viewers themselves respond well to longer videos. A 15 minute video will be more in depth and therefore more entertaining than a five minute video. I kind of agree and disagree with that. So there are some videos that I will sit down and watch from the beginning to the end. But I've also came across 40 minute long videos that I wouldn't there's no way you can't pay me to watch 40 minutes of something I don't much care for. Um, and I'm sure you guys are the same way. So, watch your analytics is the way I would put this. Um, watch your stats. You guys are pretty much going to know who's going to, how many is going to tune in and watch, you know, a, a 10 minute video of you and who's not. Um, an example, if I watch my numbers, 99% um, of my subscribers will not watch this all the way to the end. Um, I could do a giveaway in the middle of it, and most of you would not even see it. Um, now, I do have a few that, uh, that do, and um, one of them has made it a point to let me know. And um, another one, you can just tell by the conversations that he leaves down below that that's exactly what he's doing. So I know, and I know for a fact, going by my numbers, there's all together about 30 of you that actually do. But I'd like to see that go further. So, if you want to see longer videos of things I do, let me know in the description, or not down in the comments. You can just put down longer videos if that's what you want to see. Or if you want to see short videos like I normally do, you know, five minutes and under, put that down. This is the way I know what you want. And uh, the last piece here, let's see. Go big or go home. Finally get to the top of the video trend by taking it further than any other creators have done. Uh, think outside the box. When it comes to making videos that stand out for a similar content. Now this is one I definitely would give uh, Nathan. I think it's 4071. Something of that nature. I always mess that number up. But, you know, our uh, fire steel guy. Um, him and him and Redneck Renegade. So, Redneck Renegade, it, these two guys, pretty much, from my understanding, started the whole Fatwood Friday deal. Um, at least that's my understanding. These two take that trend, and every once, every so often, they take it further. So we've seen the giant monster ferro rod, which I have saved my money up for. Um, I definitely want one of those. Um, 
not only uh, could you use that to, to, to fend off a bear if you needed to, because it's about the size of a baton, but it, it's very unique, very different, and uh, I don't know, it's just, it, it's just manly. It's about the best thing I can put it to you. But you guys are always setting that trend. You're always going in a different direction than other people. I like that. So, let's see here. Um, let's see. Alright, we're going to do a little bit of links here, here. And uh, finish these up. I'm going to do um, this last one and uh, we'll call it quits for today. Because it kind of ties in. So, if YouTube is your main source of income. And um, this is always controversial for me because of um, I don't think you should be making YouTube or any uh, social media platform your main source of income. Um, I think it should be a side hustle, side job, something like that. Uh, YouTube and other platforms like Facebook, they're just too unpredictable. Um, it would be very easy for somebody to say, hey, we're promoting arson because we're over here creating fires. Um, you know, stuff like that. So, it's very easy for YouTube to come in and ban any content at any time for any reason or no reason whatsoever. They reserve the right in the terms of service. So I would not make it my primary. Um, not to mention you're only getting pennies on the dollar for most of us. Uh, that's the reason why I don't mont monetize. It's kind of silly. Yeah, um, let's see. If YouTube is your main source of income, you may find any inconsistent ad, remit, ad revenue from month to month discouraging. Like we just talked about you. One month you could be making a thousand dollars a month and then you know youtube changes something and you can go all the way down to making nothing they could demonetize uh you're not the only vlogger to worry about this no it's there's hundreds of videos on it even some of the most successful content creators still have the outside projects that help them make ends meet patreon is a good example of that well, since my uh, GoPro battery died on me, um, we'll start this back again. So basically, where I left off was just saying that YouTube should not be your primary. You're going to need secondary income. Um, YouTube is just far too unbelievable, unreliably. So to kind of wrap up, um, battery died on me. So basically... The last thing is going to be finding something else to supplement your income. So if you have made it, have made that decision, the YouTube is going to be your job, your career. Then you're you're going to have to invest into good camera gear, good lighting, good microphones, etc. Then your content really needs to be up to par to what everybody wants. You can find out what that is by paying attention and learning how to use your um, YouTube studio, your creator studio. Uh, it gives you all the information in there that you need to know. The third point that I'm going to make to you is that YouTube is unbelievably and unreliably when it comes to paying anybody out. Um, when you really get creators to sit out and talk um they literally i mean you've got to have massive amounts of followers to um start making any money so an example of this is something that i witnessed so i caught a um british family uh, prim prim primarily um girl outdoors over in britain and um i watched her her and her dad started about midway through their camp their uh, original bushcraft camp uh bug out camp um they didn't have that many followers when i first started uh, compared to what they have now um i've watched her grown over the years and watched the channel grow over the years 
and um, it was quite amazing because it first started out she was doing this when patreon was first starting so she didn't have a lot of patreon followers and then she started to slowly get them as she was teaching bushcraft and survival kind of like a girl scouts type thing and as she was being taught um she was getting better and you could see the different projects and the different way the camps were shaping up and the different designs and stuff her patreon began to go from five to ten to twenty and it kept growing and then uh, the subscribers um would you know send her things and stuff like that so it started to become a huge deal um she's at now where she was able to not go to uh what we would call college so she opted not to do that um her job is youtube uh youtube pays for her her expenses to do different things to travel um to do all kinds of stuff that's pretty amazing but not everybody's going to be Becky. So, you need to look at Patreon. Uh, GoFundMe's. Um, sharing on every single account that you, that, that's out there. So, sharing on TikTok. Um, you, uh, Instagram. Tubler. Facebook. Whatever else is out there. That's where you, that's where you need to be if you're going to make this a career. Now, so... How do we get to, all right, hey, I just want to do this for a hobby, and if I make money, I make money. Well, then you just need to simply carry on your normal day job, whatever that is, and uh, do this when you can, and um, kind of grow what you can, you know, in your time. YouTube is very time-consuming, and um, it can easily eat up an entire day by just editing out and filming and uploading a few videos. Your entire day can go then you're watching you know content on top of that and then on top of that you know you you want to keep doing research to find the best hashtags uh the best titles uh, the, the best tags best description best i mean it's an endless list um whatever you choose is totally up to you um makes no difference just remember up here the YouTube is not a reliable source of income. Um, it never has been, never will be. Um, they're making money off what you create. And you're not making money off of YouTube. Um, rare occasions that happens. But um, let's be honest. I mean, in our community of Bushcraft and uh, Batwood Friday communities and night communities, there's millions of those videos out there i mean you can keep searching and searching and searching and find them however there's very few that make it you know that their channel is based off just that and then make you a know, million dollars in a year or you know a hundred thousand in a year or thirty thousand in a year um you know it's rare um so keep that in mind and uh hope this works out for you guys hope you like these chats and if you do, um, I'll be seeing you again next week.